Hello, everyone, and welcome to OT216, Evaluation in Occupational Therapy. Today's class is on the Adolescent Adult Sensory Profile, or AASP. My name is Melissa Kay, and I'll be your instructor. Let's go ahead and get started. Before I jump into our topic, uh, just a, one note for those of you that are not regular students of mine, uh, you may not be aware of this, but uh, it's very important that you download the PDF of the presentation from the learning management system so that you can get the additional information that's on that presentation, uh, which includes uh, presenter notes, additional info and facts that may not be on the slides, links to articles, websites, definitions, a whole uh, slew of other resources. Now, why do I not just put everything on the slides? Well, what we know um, and, and what multimedia theory tells us and evidence tells us is that crowding slides with a whole ton of information means that students are reading that information as I am talking. And it's almost impossible to read and listen at the same time. So what I would love for you to do is to listen to the presentation and watch the presentation. There's plenty of words and then reference that slide deck so that you can get the additional information. If there's an area you're particularly interested in, I've included a wealth of resources so that you can dig more into the topic. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We have five objectives today. The first is just to describe what is the AASP, what's, it per what's its purpose, and how is it structured. Then we're gonna look at defining sensory processing and sensory processing disorder, or SPD. That's important because that's what this test is actually measuring. We'll discuss how the AASP assists with identifying and classifying SPD. We will describe the administration and scoring and interpretation of the AASP. And then we're gonna talk about this thing called the four quadrants. Uh, this is the system that Winnie Dunn, who's the original author of the sensory profile, how she defines and kind of characterizes sensory processing. We use that both for scoring and interpretation and then to guide intervention. The sensory profile actually started with the sensory profile one or just the original, um, which came out in 1999 and they are published by Psych Corp. And it was intended for children. Uh, then a few years later in 2002, the adult the adolescent adult sensory profile came back. And then um, the sensory profile for children was actually updated. And so now it's the sensory profile too. So good for you to know that there's this whole family of assessments. Each section of the lecture and um, accordingly the presentation video is going to be marked with a slide like this that just says, hey, this is a news section. So if you are losing your way or you need to get some organizational input, um, look for these slides that have green on them. All right, so starting off, what is sensory processing? Well. It is, uh, it's complex. So if you leave today and you don't totally understand it, that's fine. I've been studying sensory processing and sensory integration for over 20 years, and some days I still don't quite understand it um, or the, the nuances of it. But today you're gonna get this nice introduction. So sensory processing uh, is the ability to register sensory information from the environment, and that's through all eight of our sensory systems. So we have vision, hearing, touch, taste, smell, proprioception, interoception, and vestibular. And I think that you're familiar with at least seven of them. Interoception is a newer kind of identified sensory system, and that one has to do with the feeling of fullness or uh, muscular action on our internal organs. So it's, a, so it's an internal sensation. 
Uh, so the first part of sensory processing is registering or, or the, the brain saying, oh, something is happening, right, with any of these sensory systems. Then another piece is that our nervous system uh, ignores irrelevant sensory information. So if what I'm doing is focusing on my camera and on my slides and hearing my voice um, and watching my hands gesture frantically out of the corners of the slide. What I don't want to be doing is focusing on the sound of the roosters outside or the trees blowing in the wind. So um, filtering sensation is part of sensory processing. Then we want to be able to accurately interpret the information that's coming in. Um, and this is done by our brains. So um, sensation comes in through all of our sensory systems. If it's the eyes, it's the rods and cones. If it's the ears, um, it's the, uh, the eardrum and all of the, um, the hearing apparatus, right? Um, skin sensation is through tactile receptors. Proprioception is through uh, joint and muscle receptors, et cetera goes up to the brain. The brain has to make sense of it, right? It has to, it has to interpret what is going on. Then we produce an effective response to the given situation. So that's the basics. We're not going to go into a whole sensory processing lecture today, but know that there's various parts and it's heavily influenced by the neurological system. All right. And this is the, um, the founder of the um, uh, philosophy or theory of sensory integration. Her name is Dr. A. Jean Ayers. She was a psychologist and an occupational therapist in Southern California. And um, the, the, the beauty and the magic of what she did was that she created this theory, but she also created an evaluation, um, actually two, one was called the Southern California Sensory Integration Tests, which then became the Sensory Integration and Praxis Tests. So she created a, a method of evaluation and she created a method of intervention. And she did a lot of work in um, producing research that backed up her theory and her practices. So amazing woman, A. Jean Ayers, um, and she said that sensory integration, which is very closely related to sensory processing, is the neurological process that organizes sensation from one's own body and from the environment and makes it possible to use the body effectively within the environment. So a uh, super cool lady, you'll learn more about her and, um, and I invite you to, uh, to reach out to me if, if you're interested because sensory integration is my bag. All right. So we have this idea of what sensory processing is and what sensory integration is. It's beyond the scope of this lecture to, uh, to differentiate them, but suffice to say that it is the incoming information, the processing of the information, and then a, a, an output, usually a motor output, but not always, um, that individuals use to, uh, to respond to sensory input. So what is sensory processing disorder? Well, obviously something has gone wrong, right? So uh, Gene Ayers likened SPD to a neurological traffic jam that hinders the brain from accu accurately interpreting sensory input. So what she's basically saying, sorry, I haven't had a haircut in seven months and it's suddenly in my face since I'm recording. Uh, so what she said is um, the information comes in, it gets all tangled, it gets jammed up in our brains and it's not accurately interpreted. This is super important because information coming in from our brains you would think is objective, right? If I have um, visual information coming in in the form of light, it's going to affect me as the same as it affects you and you and you and you, right? But the interpretation of that information could be entirely different. So um, it's this interpretive part that causes sensory processing disorder. Um, 
differentiate that from light coming in and not hitting, uh, and, and my eye not making sense of it because I'm nearsighted or because I'm farsighted. That's a difference in the structure of my eye, whereas sensory processing disorder is absolutely mediated by our ability to interpret sensation that's coming in from any of our eight senses. It results in ineffective responses to the environment and difficulty with occupational engagement. So at the end of the day, if we're not if we're not able to take in and interpret sensation effectively, we're going to have difficulty with motor. We're going to have difficulty with our behavior because it's really um, it's really disturbing to not interpret sensation effectively. Uh, we may have difficulty with emotion. We may have difficulty with self-regulation or our alertness or arousal levels. So it affects a lot. Uh, up to one in 20 people may experience SPD. We don't know the exact cause. We do know that there's a genetic component. Sometimes uh, birth trauma can figure in there. We also know that it occurs um, in conjunction with a number of disorders, uh, one of the most common being autism spectrum disorder. And um, yeah, it's a little bit of a puzzle. It's not in the uh, DSM-5, although um, uh, various groups of folks, OTs primarily, try to get it into the DSM-5. So it's not officially recognized. However, and this is really cool, in the DSM-5, for uh, autism and a number of dif other disorders, they have sensory features. And part of the sensory features are distortions of sensation. And what that basically um, translates to in OT lingo is SPD. All right, or SPD-like symptoms. Um, so the other thing we know, awesomely, is that OT is an effective treatment for SPD. This is a slide for your reference. If you are a person that's interested in sensory processing or sensory integration, here's a, a big laundry list of various um, tools, since this is our assessment class, that are used to measure sensory processing and integration. Notice that the sensory profile is on there, all the different ones. Uh, another questionnaire-based tool, which the AASP is, is the SPM. Then we have a range of, of other tools, and they are for um, individuals of differing ages and with differing um, sets of circumstances or conditions. Notice that the last entry here is formal and informal observation. So we never ever want to underestimate the power of observing someone in an environment and seeing how they take in sensory information, how they interpret and make sense of it, and then what they do motorically, behaviorally, emotionally, et cetera, um, in terms of output. So um, for your reference, also there's um, three articles that look at um, the, uh, the quality and the ease of, and, and just a variety of different aspects of some of these instruments. So if you're interested in evaluation of sensory integration, check out the presenter notes.